Welcome to Goot Tales, episode 28, Bad in School and the Shady Pink Iguana. Though bad in school was often hurt, she did not cry, nor was she pert. She was as generous as could be, and none was more refined than she. So it is odd that when in school, she acted badly as a rule. Chapter 1 Once upon a time, there was a very elegant and thoughtful little goop girl named Bad in School. When she wasn't in school, she was a dream to be around. She would help out anyone who asked. She shared her toys, and she loved to laugh. (laughs) But when it came time for school, bad in school, purposely acted badly. She had a hard time sitting still and paying attention, so she would invent little games to amuse herself. Her teachers grew very frustrated with bad in school. So frustrated, in fact, that sometimes they just sent her home so she would stop disturbing the entire class. One day towards the end of a particularly long school day, Bad in School could hardly stand it. She stared at the clock and saw that she still had 27 minutes left before the bell rang. To Bad in School, 27 minutes felt like a million minutes. She pulled out her little chalkboard and started to draw. She held it underneath her desk so that Miss Wigglebutt couldn't see it. She drew a picture of Miss Wigglebutt slipping on a banana peel and falling right down on her rear end. Then she giggled a little. <laughs> the twins, touch em and take em, heard her giggling and peeked over at Bad in school. She just smiled back at them. Touch em and take em always touched and took things that weren't theirs. So as soon as Miss Wigglebutt wasn't looking, take em slipped his hand across the aisle and grabbed Bad in School's chalkboard. Touch em and take em started laughing so hard they couldn't stop. Bad in School was furious. She had tried to be discreet, and they were ruining everything. Miss Wigglebutt turned around to see what all the fuss was about. She walked over to touch him and take him, who tried to hide the little chalkboard. But it was too late. And where did this come from? Sneered Miss Wigglebutt as she looked down at a picture that was clearly meant to be her. She scanned the room. Her eyes slowly glanced over each goop assessing the situation. She stopped cold at bad in school. Bad in school? I believe this belongs to you? She half asked, half stated. Bad in school just looked up and made a little grimace with her mouth and then scowled over at touch him and take him. Well, since you enjoy your little drawings so much, Why don't you just take your little chalkboard and go on over to the corner and stand for the next 26 minutes and 30 seconds until the bell rings? Bad in school was steaming. This wasn't her fault, but she knew there would be no way of explaining that to Miss Wigglebutt. She grabbed the chalkboard from Takem and went to the corner and turned her back on everyone. Touch him and take him looked at each other and sighed. They both felt bad, but not bad enough to tell Miss Wigglebutt that they had caused the disturbance. Miss Wigglebutt continued on with her session. She was teaching the goops about giant turtles and the Galapagos Islands. Bad in school heard her say that the giant turtles walked around with their homes on their backs. Bad in school very much wanted to go home. I wish I had my home on my back. I could just go home right now, she thought to herself. She took her chalkboard and erased the picture of Miss Wigglebutt and drew a picture of a giant turtle. 
Oh, Turtle, I wish I could be just like you, said Bat in school. And why is that? asked the Turtle. Bad in school looked around, wondering if someone was playing a trick on her. Was this turtle she had just drawn really talking to her? I'm right here. Stop looking around and tell me, why is it that you would like to be just like me? asked the turtle. Bad in school stared down at the turtle again, and this time she answered her. Because you have your home on your back, and I would like to be able to have my home on my back, and then I could go home whenever I wanted, answered Bad in school. Well, you can always come visit my home, said the turtle. Bad in school leaned in very close to her chalkboard. She wanted to get a closer look at this turtle she had just drawn. It was just a turtle drawn from chalk. She put her nose up to the chalkboard to try and examine the turtle's shell. Then she disappeared. Touchem and Takem were watching from across the classroom. They saw Bat in school lean down close into the chalkboard. And then, without warning, she vanished. Chapter 2 Everything went dark, and Bad in School could feel herself being squished. Her whole body flattened out, and she couldn't see a thing. She felt like she was being pulled into a small, flat tube, and she was moving very quickly. Then everything stopped, and she landed in a snug little spot. Bad in school opened up her eyes. She was inside what looked to be like a small, cozy cave. There was a kitchen area full of grass and lettuce, and next to the kitchen area was a tiny bedroom with a perfect bed for snuggling into. Bad in school felt safe and warm. She had no idea where she was, but it was much better than being back in the corner at school. Bat in school was wearing her favorite little hat with a feather stuck in it. And as she moved around, the feather touched the ceiling of the cozy cave. It brushed back and forth across the hard shell-like ceiling. Suddenly, the ground beneath Bat in school began to shake. She felt like she was in the middle of an earthquake as she rocked back and forth. Then there was a huge rumbling and Bat in school took a tumble. She felt herself flattening out again, and this time she was spit out from the cozy cave home. She was blinded by daylight and landed on soft earth. Bat in school opened her eyes and came face to face with a real-life giant tortoise. Oh dear, oh dear, I didn't mean to do that. It has been years since I've had visitors. I'm almost 90 years old, and I'm so sensitive these days. Oh, dear, oh, dear. What am I going to do with you now? said the tortoise. She seemed very concerned, which concerned Bat in school. The tortoise looked Bat in school up and down, and then she said, Your feather! It must have been the feather in your hat. The feather in my hat? Whatever do you mean? inquired Bat in school. Well, you were inside my shell, nice and safe and cozy and warm. And then that feather tickled my insides, and I sneezed. And out you came. I'm so sorry, said the tortoise, who introduced herself as... Turtleine. Don't be sorry, Turtleine. It's okay, said Bat in school. Oh, but really, I am sorry. 
because now you set foot on the Galapagos Islands, and I can't just send you back. Well, not yet, anyway. Turtleine went on to explain that Baden School was in the Galapagos Islands, home to many tortoises and exotic animals, including the blue-footed booby, the forgot, and the pink iguana. In order for Baden School to get back home, she was going to have to return the way she came, back through Turtleine's shell. But once you set foot on the Galapagos soil, you had to help the blue-footed booby, the forgot, and the pink iguana. No one could leave the Galapagos without helping out the animals. No problemo, announced Bad in School proudly. I love animals, and I will do whatever I can to help them. Turtleine looked up towards the sky as if she was thinking very hard. She cleared her throat. <coughs> oh, how do I say this? Well, I'll just come out with it. The blue-footed booby and the forgot will be happy to have help with something. They love new company. But the pink iguana, Shady? He's another story. Do you know anything about iguanas? Uh, no, said Bad in school, as she desperately tried to remember what she had been taught in school. But of course, she couldn't remember since she rarely paid attention in school. Well, let me tell you a few things before you encounter Shady. Iguanas have razor-sharp teeth, and Shady could bite you right in two. You're so small. He's also powerful enough to jump right through a window, and he is very territorial. Then Turtleine gave Bat in school a tiny kick in the rear and said, Okay, get going now. The sooner you get this over with, the sooner you can hop back in my shell and go home. And then Turtleine disappeared into her shell, leaving Bat in school all alone. Chapter 3 Bad in school looked around. She reached up and touched her feather, just to make sure this wasn't some sort of bad dream. Nope, her feather was there, and she was in the Galapagos. Okay, I need to embrace this adventure. I'm here now, and there's no going back until I help out the blue-footed booby, the forgot, and oh yeah, the pink iguana. Shady, ugh, yeah, thought Bad in school. She walked along a gorgeous white sand beach while she enjoyed the view of bright blue water. As Bad in school came to the end of the beach, she saw a sign hanging from a tree that said party in several different languages. Party, festa, partito, fiesta, parte said Bad in school as she read out loud. Oh my, there's going to be a party, she thought as she reached up to touch the little feather in her hat. Yep, it's summer solstice party. Everyone is coming. Well, everyone who matters, come along with me. I will show you the way, she heard a little voice say. Bad in school looked around and didn't see anyone. Down here, Missy! She heard a tiny voice call out. Bat in school looked down to see the most adorable little red crab crawling along. Sally Lightfoot, at your service! quipped the little crab. Bat in school let out a little giggle and then listened as Sally Lightfoot told her all about the Galapagos summer solstice party. All of the island animals and birds got together once a year to celebrate the beginning of summer. 
They sang and danced and ate a feast, and everyone let go of their personal squabbles for the day. That sounds marvelous. Do you think I could find a blue-footed booby and a forgot at the party? asked Bat in school. But of course, they always come. Uh, uh, but, said Sally Lightfoot. Oh, what? asked Bat in school. Oh, nothing. Forget it, said Sally. No, what? Say it, said Bat in school. She pretty much knew what was coming, but she wanted to be sure. Well, you're going to have to find Shady the Pink Iguana, too. That is, if you ever want to go back home, said Sally. I know, I know. I just didn't want to think about him right now, answered Bat in school. I get it. Don't worry. No one likes Shady. He can be, well, shady, laughed Sally Lightfoot. You have to watch out for him. Well, let me just enjoy the party first and help out the blue-footed booby and a forgot, and then I will worry about Shady, said Bad in school. Music was flowing through the air as they approached the party. Bad in school started to dance. She danced her way right into the middle of the party where there were tortoises, birds, loads of Sally's relatives, and many other exotic creatures. Bat in school was dancing so wildly that her hat flew off. She ran after it and leaned down to pick it up. And there, right near her hat, were two giant blue feet. She looked up and found herself eyeball to eyeball with a blue-footed booby named Bobby, who was crying his eyes out. Bat in school let out a little gasp of excitement. <gasps> she was so thrilled to find a blue-footed booby. But why are you crying, booby? she asked. Because I want to dance with that Betty, that beautiful blue-footed booby standing over there, and she won't even look at me said Bobby Booby, as he pointed over to a group of girl boobies. Betty looked like the leader of the little girl group. Bad in school knew all about this kind of girl. She was like the most popular girl in school, the kind that would never give a guy like poor Bobby Booby the time of day. This will be a cinch. Just do what I say instructed Bat in school. Then she told Bobby Booby to start dancing with her and to flap up his wings and move his feet and dance and look right at Bat in school as if he was having the time of his life. So Bobby Booby did just that and he and Bat in school began to laugh and dance. They were both having a grand old time. It took about half a minute for Betty Booby to come strutting over and bat her big booby eyelashes at Bobby. Um, Bobby, do you want to dance with me? She asked. Bobby looked at Bat in school. She gave him a little smile and a nod, and off he went to dance with Betty Booby. Sally Lightfoot was watching the whole thing. She crawled over to Bat in school and said, Wow, you're pretty good at this. One down and two to go. You'll be home in no time. Then she paused and said, That is if Shady doesn't. Then she stopped herself mid-sentence. Chapter 4 Bat in school stared down at Sally Lightfoot and said, If Shady doesn't, what? Nothing. Forget it. Forget I even said a thing, replied Sally Lightfoot. You still have to find a frigate and help him out. Now get going. A little shiver ran down Bat in school's spine 
as she thought about Shady, but she shoved that thought to the very back corner of her head. She had more important things to think about, like finding a frigate. Now that she had stopped to think about it, Bad in school didn't even know what a frigate was. So she asked Sally Lightfoot. Sally told Bad in school that a frigate was a long-beaked, black-feathered bird that lived in the Galapagos. The males had big pouches under their beaks that could expand, kind of like a pelican. Then she said, You can always tell when a boy frigate wants to find a girlfriend because he puffs up his pouch and it gets really big and it turns bright red. The girls like that. Bad in school burst out <laughs> laughing. She thought that was one of the funniest things she had ever heard. Then she looked around and not too far away, she saw a boy frigate hanging out with a few of Sally Lightfoot's crab friends. Oh my gosh, Sally, do you mean a big red pouch like that guy over there has? She asked. Sally glanced over. Why, yes, I do, she said. That is Fabio Frigate, and he is definitely looking for a girlfriend. He's probably asking my crab friends for advice, but they're no good at that sort of thing. Bad in school stood up and fluffed the feather in her hat, and then she announced, Leave it to me. I can help this frigate out. Then Bad in School walked right over to Fabio Frigate and said, Fabio, you look fabulous tonight. All of the girl frigates are talking about how fantastic you are. Fabio puffed himself up and turned around and came face to face with Bad in school. Could you say that one more time? He asked. So Bad in school said, Fabio, you look fabulous tonight. Then she gave him a mischievous little wink. That was all Fabio needed to boost his confidence. He walked straight away from all the little crabs and straight into a group of girl frigates and asked Fiona Frigate if she would like to dance. Fiona, of course, said yes, and off they went to dance a frigate foxtrot at the summer solstice party in the Galapagos. Wow, wow, wow! exclaimed Sally Lightfoot. I'm impressed! You helped a blue-footed booby and a frigate find love tonight. Who knows what else you can do? Maybe you can take on Shady after all. Bad in school was very pleased with herself. She had taken fast action and gotten results, but her biggest challenge was still ahead. She turned to Sally Lightfoot and said, I may as well get this over with. Where do I find Shady, the pink iguana? Sally Lightfoot made a scowly face, pointed towards a dark clump of trees, and said, Uh huh. He's probably over there lurking in the shadows because he knows no one really likes him. I don't want to stick around for this. I'm leaving. And off she crawled. Bad in school was on her own now, and she was definitely scared. But she knew there was only one way home. She walked as close as she could bear to the dark clump of trees and called out, Shady? in a tentative voice. Without warning, a long, scaly pink mouth that shone in the moonlight popped out from the bushes and ripped right through Baden School's dress. She heard razor-sharp teeth scratching down her chalkboard as the mouth disappeared. Baden School looked down at her dress with giant tears in it. She desperately wanted to turn and run for her life, but there was no going back unless she could find a way to help Shady. What would an iguana want? Bad in school thought to herself. Then she knew the answer. She ran to the party 
and grabbed a big bowl of grass salad and then ran back to the edge of darkness where Shady was lurking. She pushed the bowl of salad as close as she dared and said, Shady, this is for you. Then she waited. She watched as Shady came out from the darkness and silently ate the salad. His pink back shone in the moonlight and moon drops reflected off each scale. Bad in school couldn't believe how beautiful Shady was. She pulled out her chalk and drew a picture of him as he ate. By the time she was done, he had finished the salad, and he looked up at Bad in school with sad eyes. Don't be sad, Shady. Do you even know how marvelous you are? I think you are one of the most glorious creatures I've ever seen, with your pink scales. Just take a look, she said as she turned her chalkboard around so Shady could see a splendid pink drawing of himself. Shady had never seen himself before. A big tear came to his eye as he let out a smile. For the first time in his life, Shady felt admired. He gave a little wink to bat in school and turned to crawl back to the volcano. I've done it! I've really done it! thought Bat in school to herself. I've helped them all! Then she sauntered back to the party and found Turtleine. I'm ready to go home, she said. Why, yes, you are! Just climb on in, replied Turtleine. And just like that, Bat in school climbed up inside of Turtleine's shell. She felt herself being squished flat and everything turned black. Then she felt herself being shoved back out the other side. She opened her eyes and found herself back in her empty classroom. Everyone had gone home, including Miss Wigglebutt. Bat in school immediately set off to find Touchem and Takem and tell them all about the Galapagos and Shady, but they were nowhere to be found. Touchem and Takem were deep in the Amazon, facing down a very angry golden lion tamarind. But that is a tale for another time. Hey there, it's Maria. Thanks for listening to Goop Tales. If you want to listen to another one, all you have to do is click on your screen and you can. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Goop Tales and you'll always be notified when there's a new one. You can tag us on social media at Goop Tales on either Facebook or Instagram. I'd love to hear your questions and comments. And you can also leave me a voicemail if you go to gooptales.com and use the little prompt in the sidebar. Okay, I will see you in the next Goop Tale.